Good morning, we're heading towards Harlem, Georgia. Harlem, Georgia. And what are we gonna do when we get there? Uh, well, one place that sounds interesting is the Laurel and Hardy Museum. We'll see what that's like. And I think they have a little place to eat there called a Fine Mess Cafe. So we'll have to check out the fine, a fine mess cafe as well. Yeah, I didn't see the sign for the museum. There's a theater I had. Look at that. Train track. Important place here. It had a train coming through. So a furniture store. Uh, a gift shop. In, oh no, Italian and Mexican restaurant. The dental's in a pretty building. See this, those faces. Okay, so there's a Columbia Theater. Uh -huh. Well, we stopped the van and we parked, we found the museum. It's the, also the uh, Harlem Museum and Welcome Center and also the home of the Laurel and Hardy Museum. So we're gonna go inside, hopefully it's open. Um, notice the beautiful camellias here. Yeah. I think those are really pretty. Hopefully they'll let spike go in. Yeah, hopefully. Open from 10 to 4. Yeah. Should be open. Okay, ask, uh, ask those guys for a ticket. See if you can buy a ticket from them. Can I have a ticket? He's ignoring me. He doesn't answer. Yeah. This boy up here. Let's start by the How are you Hey, pretty good. Welcome. Hi. Come can my dog come in? That's fine. Cool. That is fine. Okay. This is the first time y'all visited us? It is. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, so there's no fee to get in. Uh, we just run by a donation. But we do keep a guest book. So we just ask for your name and your hometown. All right. All right. And I'm glad you let him in. He's actually the best behaved of us all. He's yeah, better. We have some uh, dog treats. If y'all don't mind, there's smoke bones. Okay, yeah. As long as you ask him to sit and shake. All right. Well, I'll just give y'all y'all and let y'all do that. Okay. Oh, he'll do it for you. Sure, he'll, he'll, he'll definitely shake hands with you. Tell him to sit and shake, and he'll. He says, "Oh my goodness, for a treat, I'll do anything." All right. Sit down. Sit. Sit. Good job. Shake. Shake. Good job. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Um, well, let me tell you a little bit about the museum before y'all get in, and let me get your names for the mm -hmm. guest book. Uh, the museum is two parts: Laurel and Hardy stuff on the middle, in the middle of it, and then the outside is. Uh, city of Harlem history. A lot of really cool stuff. Uh, we rotate our Laurel and Hardy stuff quarterly because we have a lot of stuff and we just want to make sure that it stays together and in good shape for a long time. Uh, in the back there's a theater. It's running Laurel and Hardy shorts. You're welcome to uh, oh, sit down and watch as many as you'd like. Uh, there's a photo booth, the car right behind you. There's also a photo booth inside. You're welcome to take pictures. And we said that you don't use flash. Um, and that's really about it. We ask that you don't touch anything. We've had some people get handsy, so. Um, mm. And if you have any questions, we'll be up here. I'll be happy to answer. All right, thank you. Okay. And then, again, can I get uh, y'all's y'all's name for our guest book? Okay. And hometown. Deborah and Lorna. A perfect day. Okay. And, uh,
the salad Today, mentioned was. He is known as a classic American comic actor and half of one of Hollywood's greatest comedy teams of all time, Laura Hardy. This world famous duo began in the era of silent films and lasted from 1927 to 1951. Introducing Oliver Hardy, next on Market History. Saturday in October, tens of thousands of loyal fans come to Harlem, Georgia from around the world to share in the memories at the Laurel and Hardy Festival. Norvell was born in Harlem, Georgia on January 18, 1892 to parents Oliver and Emily Hardy. He was the youngest of five children. Sadly, his father died that same year in November. In 1903, his mother moved the Hardy family to Georgia's former capital, Milledgeville, so she could manage the Baldwin Hotel. As you can imagine, Norville was constantly bullied and teased about his weight growing up, but he was able to compensate by sharing his wonderful singing voice with his local audiences. Norville Hardy had been preordained for a military career like his father. But Destiny stepped in after he became manager and projectionist at the Palace Movie Theater in Milledgeville, Georgia in 1910. It is possible that Norville found inspiration after viewing the films of John Bunny, the world famous fat man of the day and the first comedian of the motion picture era. Norville soon became obsessed with the new film industry and was convinced that he could do a better job than the actors that he viewed up on that silver screen. A friend suggested that he move to Jacksonville, Florida, where some of the films were being made. So Norval changed his first name to Oliver in honor of his dad and moved to Jacksonville in 1913 to follow his acting dream. Oliver was a big man, weighing 300 pounds at six foot one inch tall. Restricted by his size when it came to casting, he was almost always the big villain or the clumsy fellow in the films for the Lubin Manufacturing Company. His first film was called Outwitting Dad, produced in 1914. By the end of that year, Oliver had made 39 short films, billed as Babe Hardy. Because of his weight, his height, and his menace face, Oliver became a heavy in many silent films during his time on the East Coast. In 1917, Hardy moved to Hollywood. As a freelance actor, Hardy worked for several Hollywood studios, including Sunlight Pictures, who released a two-wheel comedy called The Lucky Dog in 1921. In a magical moment captured on film, this was the first time that Oliver Hardy played opposite an English actor who had become his lifelong friend and partner. Though they appeared in scenes together, Oliver Hardy and Stan Laurel played independently of each other and not as the comedic team they were later to become. Of course, Oliver played the heavy again. As you can see from this clip from the film, Stan's eyes looked kind of funny. It was discovered that his pale blue eyes showed up as white on orthochromatic film of the time. Film producers tried to fix the problem with eye makeup, but it wasn't well received. Stan Laurel had to step behind the camera, working as a gag man and a director at Hal Road Studios, home of the R Gang series. Meanwhile, they made appearances with the Little Rascals. Later, panchromatic film was developed and Laurel began acting in front of the camera again. Hal Roach saw atomic potential between Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy, so he put them together as a double act in their first short called Putting Pants on Film in 1927. The results are hilarious. So began a long career with the best-loved comic duo in American cinema history. By the way, 
Oliver picked this film as his favorite comedy short. It is interesting to note that Stan Laurel was a big part of their behind the scenes success, helping craft the team's slapstick films and writing and directing some of their best material. In another Hal Roach silent film shot that year, Battle of the Century had one of the greatest pie fights ever filmed. Guess who gets the first pie in the face? Yep, it was Ollie. Of course, it escalates soon after. Over 3,000 cream pies died in the making of this movie, which were thrown not with abandon, but with slow burn precision, hiding the comedic effect. Don't be rude. Oliver Hardy developed many mannerisms as his career grew. Of course, there was the tie twiddle and the finger waving, but his signature gag was breaking the fourth wall, as they say in the theater. In order to break the fourth wall, the character communicates directly with the audience. Oliver Hardy often broke the fourth wall in his films with Stan Laurel, where he would stare directly at the lens. It was his way of connecting with the audience through the camera. His close-up glares often showed disbelief over his face while looking for sympathy. He also stared at the camera during one of his famous and hilarious slow burns. During the course of their career, the duo appeared as a team in 106 films, starring in 34 short silent films, 45 short sound films, and 27 full-length feature films. It never gets older. Their comedic genius was finally acknowledged with the 1932 Academy Award for Best Live Action Short Subject with their film, The Music Box. The simple plot revolved around the pair lugging a piano up a seemingly endless flight of steps before, eventually, it smashed the smithereens. The next year, Laurel and Hardy starred in the now famous feature film, The Sons of the Desert. The 1933 film begins with a group of men in Fezzes singing Auld Lang Syne. It is a California meeting of the Sons of the Desert, a fraternal lodge of which both Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy are members. I repeat, this, the oldest lodge of the great order of the Sons of the Desert, must be represented 100% in our annual convention at Chicago next week. So what does Ollie's wife say? You're not going. Stan is reluctant to ask for fear that his wife Betty won't allow the trip, but decides to sneak away after Ollie persuades him. I guess what happens in Chicago doesn't stay in Chicago. Predictably, they pay the price for deceiving their wives. I've got my gun, and I've never missed yet. During their shenanigans, Ollie gives a famous movie quote. Well, here's another nice mess you've got me into. The Sons of the Desert International Laurel and Hardy Appreciation Society was formed to keep the works of Stan and Ollie before the public and have a good time while doing it. Worldwide, there are well over a hundred active chapters today whose members meet regularly to enjoy Laurel and Hardy movies in a casual atmosphere. It turns out, Dave Hardy was good friends with golfing buddy and brother Freemason, John Wayne. So when Wayne asked Oliver to co-star with him in The Fighting Kentuckian in 1949, he said yes but only after making sure it was okay with his partner, Stan Laurel. Hardy delivered a memorable light comedy performance with the dude. As the teen aged, health problems began to crop up. Well, there's another nice mess you've gotten me into. It didn't help that both men were heavy smokers. Hal Roach said they were a couple of freight train smokestacks. Oliver Hardy suffered a mild heart attack in May 1954, and he began looking after his health for the first time in his life. He lost more than 150 pounds in a few months, which completely changed his appearance. Unfortunately, his health declined over the next two years, suffering several debilitating struggles. Oliver Norvell Hardy finally died on August 7, 1957, at age 65.
Today, the sons of the desert and other Laurel and Hardy aficionados can still visit Harlem, Georgia to experience the festival, the museum, and to honor Oliver Hardy. Although the comic duo had passed on, their memories will live on in films as long as an audience wants to laugh. We'll just put music on it. Uh huh. And uh. Look at all the different mugs. And uh, different mugs. And salt and pepper shakers. Oh, those are really cool. Salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> and look, they have a mold so you can make your own uh -huh. Olive and Hardy bisque and then paint it yourself. Uh huh. Catchphrases, look, here we go. Okay. Well, uh, here's another fine mess you've gotten me into. It was never actually used in a film. It appears to be a misunderstanding stemming from the title of the movie, Another Fine Mess. Here's another nice mess I've gotten you into. Huh. Uh. Here's another nice bucket of suds you've gotten me into. I bet though. It was used to surprise impatience and could, could, could. Hmm. Just like with that. Look at that one. <laughs> uh, Stan <clears throat> Laurel looks a little pale there. Yeah. A little pale. Oh. Scratching his head. They did quite a few uh, movies. Yeah, they did. Sons of the Desert. Yeah, I don't know. Sons of the Desert. Yeah. Look. This is an all wooden car. Wow, including the motor and the tires. This is all wood. But you know, I don't really see a motor anywhere. Unless this is it's in the back. Oh, really? Let's see here. Look at these. These tires are painted wood. <laughs> okay. There's the motor. Oh, okay, now I see it. I didn't want to the way Yeah, and the chain. Everything's wood. Even the chain and that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Slot machine. Pinball machine. I mean a pin uh, yeah. slot machine, yeah, pinball <laughs> machine. We like slot machines. I guess I say slot machine. Well, that was pretty fun. Um, Laurel and Hardy, they were pretty amazing guys. And learned a little, learned a bit, a little bit more about them. So, uh, pretty neat. But, uh, thanks for watching. Take care. And back on the road to the Georgia Guidestones next. Bye.